Okay, so in this video we're going to do the page animation, finish off the page animation, uh, where we slide between pages, so the login page will slide out and the register page will slide in, for example, whereas right now we just have the secondary page sliding in and the first page just disappearing. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in this video. I keep seeing this pop up every now and then. Uh, basically, XAML doesn't really like generics, so you have to work hard at getting it to accept them uh, and I keep seeing this hovering up whenever we're using anything that involves our uh, attached properties because they are generic attached properties that we made so let's just fix this first you can see the issue here says it's, it violates the constraints of parent so if we just go to in fact if we use the shortcut control T which is easier type base attach property and there it is uh, it's complaining about this because we are constraining it to a generic type and that's perfectly valid but the problem is XAML is no good at handling generic so it just doesn't like this part here so let's just delete that part and you'll see the issue we then get um, which is only really a small one uh, which is that this instance now doesn't have this on value change because it's just an instance of whatever the parent passes in which will always be a base attached property because it passes itself in so we know it's going to be this because we're going to abide by that rule anyway so let's just copy that delete it from there uh, and then we'll just fix those small issues by simply control click on the instance and paste the type in in fact no let's not do that let's just do um, instance as that uh, what am I doing instance as that and the same here. Uh, object, re okay, so it's definitely working now because it's changed to object reference is not set to an instance of an object. <clears throat> well, the only way that could happen is if this instance. Uh, is null, which I'm guessing somewhere behind the scenes that WPF is making this uh, content not be a current page, so maybe it's null, um, <clears throat> which I think it will be by default, so at some point this is going to be null, so let's just add a question mark here, um, and then that should fix the build issue with attached properties. There we go, let's get rid of that build issue. Uh, we have another one here, cannot read page properties because it's not in the tree with window as root, which it is. So again, I think this is just an issue with it dynamically uh, doing a value converter to a page into a frame. Again, I think WPF is just struggling. Um, so we can tweak this. Um, the way we do this content so we can override it at design time so at least we get rid of that error so we'll do a we need to change it to a data context so that we could do a design time data context of nothing to fix the error which that should actually fix the error oh it will when we finish this um, so let's move all this into a data context and then simply bind this to the binding and so what we've done now is shifted the data context of the frame to be the page and we've simply bound to that so we could move the converter out uh, into here but to be honest there's no real need of this work so let's just run the application now and see if that still works yeah so that's sort of fixed the few design time visibles we were seeing and the only downside there is you don't see a page uh, in the main window frame but that's fine we can see the page if we actually open up the page so if we just went to you know login page uh, or went to the actual login page you know you can see it there so I think it's just that um, WPF isn't quite as as capable of handling you know the complicated situations with throwing at it to see it all at design time uh, so that fixes uh, the design time issues we were having. 
Uh, the one thing we've also got to do, I've just thought, um, let me just check what we did with base attach property then. Uh, Were we calling? No, I think that's okay. Yeah, so we should be good there. So now let's just fix the login view model. Change it back to <coughs> navigate into the register page. And let's see if this. So this still works. So the next issue we've mentioned is this navigation page up here um, the navigation frame or navigation bar whatever you want to call it um, and we don't want that we want to get a handle our navigation in the view models so we need to get rid of this this bar at the top that will be done in the frame wherever we are here uh, I don't think we need the name there and I think it's called navigation UI something navigation UI visibility hidden and that will well should get rid of the bar which it does but you'll also see we've if you press alt on the keyboard and press left you'll see we are navigating back so you can navigate the navigation still there so it's not quite a complete fix so we need to clear the navigation history every time we navigate to keep it as a you know non navigation so because that involves code behind to clear the frames navigation service every time things change we'll just use an attach property so in the attach properties let's just copy say button attach properties copy and paste uh, we'll call this one no frame history because we want to get rid of the frame history the no frame history attach property for creating a frame that never shows navigation and keeps the navigation history empty. Remember to pass in the class itself and it's going to be a true which is fine. Uh, we'll override the on value changed and we first need to get the frame that we attach to so that would be uh, our frame equals sender as frame we might as well do this so we don't have to attach that as well so change the navigation UI navigation UI visibility equals hidden so hide navigation bar Now we also need to clear history whenever we navigate, so I'll say clear history on navigate. Uh, for that we'll just do hook into the event handler for when it navigates, which is navigated, so when it's finished. Uh, we'll just add an event handler right here, it's going to be nice and short. So we then want to do the sender here, will be same as this call, you've got a sender and an event. So the sender is going to be a frame again. So we'll cast the sender to a frame, and then we'll say navigation service dot uh, remove back entry, which removes the last navigated history. So basically, whenever you navigate, you clear that one that you navigated to from the history. So this just simply constantly keeps the navigation history empty, and that's it. That's our attach property. So we should be able to now attach that to here. Uh, like that, I think. Yep. And now if we run and we navigate and we press Alt and back, Alt and left rather, you can see there's no history. We could also temporarily just comment out uh, this line so that we can see the bar to see that there is no history. 
So you can see we've navigated, but there's no no history there. So let's fix the frame. <clears throat> so now we want to, in order to navigate and animate two things at once, we're going to have to have two frames because we need to animate this out while the next one's animating in. We don't want to wait for that to animate out and then change uh, to the next one. So we need two frames to do that. Also, the other issue is we can't bind the content directly to the frame because that's a current page and the binding and more importantly the value converter is synchronous so you can't you can't sort of await for the previous frame to finish and move to the next frame or set the other frame um, but actually we're not going to wait for the next frame we're going to set you know set another frame and then move on but either way i think because we want to keep it clean we want to just be able to bind a control to the current page and have it simply you know navigate to that page and animate the previous one out I think we'll turn this into a user control so let's go and go into controls let's add a new user control and let's call it I don't know page host or something let's change the namespace here uh, remove the controls word, press F7, remove the controls from the namespace, clear all the unused stuff, clean up this. <coughs> There's also a new way I found to wrap things in a region. So instead of typing region constructor and then going down here and end region, what you can now do is simply select the line below, all the thing you want and the line above, press control K and then with control still pressed, you press S and that's for command surround and it shows this pop up then tap down twice and press enter for region and now type the name of the region constructor and I've only just learned that uh, I can't think where I spotted it but I spotted it being done um, I think it was when I was looking for a shortcut for um, wrapping something and I read that you can press control S and I, it wasn't actually for wrapping regions it was for something else like one of these and I just spotted region in the name. So of all the years I've been doing it, I've, this is the first time I've realised you can do a little shortcut to to wrap regions. So if you can remember it, it's Control K and then S, which is Command Surround by because it's to surround some code. Uh, so that's the constructor. Then in this control, we want to just have a grid's fine because we want to overlay each other. Just want to have two frames. One with the name of say old page and another one with the name well let's uh, also add the uh, local no frame history dot value equals true. Copy and paste we'll have one called new frame uh, new page. So we just have two frames and then whenever the current page changes we will update the new page and just before that we'll check if the new page has already got a value from before you navigate away set it to the old one and animate the page out so if we now try to use the page host so we change this to local page host on that grid you no longer need that we'll keep the data context the same and content is now not what we want we don't need the background transparent it already is so the issue we have now is we're not a frame so the content won't work well I think it would work but you just simply replace the content I you know wouldn't do so you know can't create instance um, so we want to have like a property like this called current page and to do that this is a dependency property so if we go back to the page there's another shortcut. Again, dependency properties are almost identical to attach properties. It's just a different way to register them. And unfortunately, they're also just as messy. So if we do, again, there's a shortcut for this, type prop, and you'll see these little uh, dot dot dots with a, a square around them. This is like a code snippet. This is a helper that inserts, you know, predefined code. So like prop A and tab twice and insert uh, a dependency prop, uh, an attach property the one we've done previously 
uh, and then you'll see from that prop DP which stands for property uh, display dependency property so type in prop DP and then tab twice and that'll insert a value you can see it's highlighted here in blue which means it's ready to type and replace all the instances so we can define the type uh, well the current page needs to be a base page and you'll see the issue we've got here is the base page is currently generic so we need to go and fix that so let's just presume we'll fix that in a moment and while we're still in this the gray means there's something else to change as well so while you're in the sort of dynamic creation mode blue is where you currently are which we've now changed and you can see it's changed base page well it will change this in here and this in here when we tab and now it's also moved over to the next thing which is the property name to change and it's going to change here where the red dots are and here and here uh, and you can see this is actually a, a name that includes property at the end so, but it's smart enough to you know change the name only at this point in creation so we create the name now call it current page and press enter and you can see it's changed this to current page property this to current page uh, this control dot it doesn't know where that is dependency property uh, type of base page we've got to fix and then here's the other thing you need to fix the type of owner class it, it's saying a dependency property has to be attached to uh, you know a dependency object which in this case is our page itself we want this property to be on this page this page host so in the type of owner class paste page host this will change this is the default value uh, right now which is an integer still it doesn't really fix that so um, we'll change that to a UI property metadata and in that I think we can pass in an event there we go callback for some when the property changes because we want to know when the current page changes then we'll update the frames manually so this can be uh, current page property changed control dot and then enter to generate the method for us let's just move this out and tidy this up a little bit so region property changed events called when the let's see current page value has changed and then we'll implement this in a moment comment this and you can see my again this editor config I talked about previously as complaining because this can be instead of doing the curly brackets you can do a shorthand version like that and then remove the keyword return and then the same here and also a quicker way of doing that is select anywhere where it's red control dot and enter and you won't get these warnings yet I'm gonna commit this on the next video uh, this helper editor config file or maybe do a short video on it so you can tweak it as you like and it sort of forces these um, these hints to make the code shorter if you will all, all places you can do things easier it, it sort of shows an error to, to force you into doing it as a standard it's just something I made up and applied so that we always keep our code as clean as possible so a dis dependency property consists of this register call which is very similar we take a look at the base attack property you'll see here value property that we made dependency property dot register attached there's a name a type uh, an owner and a UI property and here it's exactly the same so we have uh, a name a type an owner and a property the only difference is that you call register not register attached and then the back end thing here that was a value which we did uh, get value set value with the keywords get and set before we simply get replaced by doing a public property which causes it to have functions called get current page and set current page anyway so this is very very similar to an attached property but this is the way you do a dependency property and again I don't like this because now you have gotta define two things I also don't like this it's um, hard and I don't get why the code snippet isn't smart enough to do this but instead of having a string that says current page then we go and change this to current page 2 this is now never gonna work it's not updated so 
change this also, delete this string and type name of current page and that'll simply convert this to a string but now if we rename this it's going to rename there as well so it's never going to break so that's all the dependency property is again I'll probably go over this more uh, in another video maybe on just dependency properties but really a dependency property is just about getting a public property to be settable inside of XAML so we can now do say in uh, in this window this will now start working when we compile we can you know we can actually set it as if it's a value a property on a control inside of XAML so this is just a property as simple as that we tell it to fire this current page property changed when this gets get uh, set to a different value so we can even do that in code like in here we could just say uh, current page equals a new login page and by us setting this here we'll get this fired here so it's like you know it's like putting a value inside the setter but you can't put a value inside the setter directly here because of how dependency properties work it wouldn't work that way so you have to use this sort of syntax to turn this into a property that can be accessed in XAML and in uh, code behind so we've got the property there let's change this from a normal comment again I don't get why the code behind doesn't do a proper comment uh, registers current page as a dependency property so there's our dependency property let's put a space there let's wrap this control K S region and we'll call it dependency I always spell it wrong dependency properties I have to really think that word out so we've got the dependency property for current page and it's going to be a base page which we've got to fix at the moment and then when it changes we'll come back to that in a minute so let's go and just fix this base page because this could be of any page it doesn't be a login page it could be any kind of page so let's just go to the base page first and take a look at the issue so we're passing in a view model uh, prim eh, primarily so we can have uh, this view model here so that any page can do just you know this dot view model and get access to its view model which is handy and also when we set it it sets the data context so that's the reason we pass in the view model here but everything else about the, the page and, and what we care about is the animation in this case has nothing to do with generics so it doesn't need to be generic so what we'll do is strip out the generic part and create a separate base class so that we can at least access the animation of the base page so let's create one above just call it base page it's going to be a regular page uh, a base page for all pages to gain base functionality so same comment uh, a base page with added view model support this one's going to become this is now going to inherit from the standard base page the non-generic and then we can just move so that's uh, got a stake it's the VM public properties we can move everything except the view model so let's select all those cut everything in the public properties except the view model and let's paste it in there select around KS region uh, public properties so all we're doing is moving off you know what was in this class down into the base class which we're overriding anyway so we're not losing any functionality we're simply moving everything we can into this non-generic class so that we can use this as a standard variable without knowing anything about a view model uh, so that's a public property done constructor sets up these two things which aren't generic so let's just copy that constructor delete that out of this one make sure we call the base which I think it does by default anyway but 
I like to explicitly call the base constructor so it's obvious that we're also going to call this constructor paste the entire constructor again and this time delete the opposite side delete the view model part and now we want to move the function so let's just carry on and that will fix itself uh, so now the animation that's nothing to do with view models so that can all come with us so let's just cut that entire region and paste it here and that's all fine and now I think that's it so we've now got a base page that we can access the animations with and we've got a base page that can pass in a view model that then simply adds the ability to have the view model set and that's all that addition does so now this shows here which is what we want we've got a current page and then we've got this that we'll implement so we put a breakpoint here and let's compile and I think this should just compile fine now yep so that's compiled successfully so if we press F5 to run it all runs fine we've now got to uh, oh I think I lost my breakpoint thought we put a breakpoint here uh, let's rerun that. We should hit this breakpoint. There we go. So we're getting fired with uh, this dependency property, which is now telling us to go into the login page. So at this stage now, all that's left to do is to first we want to get hold of the old and new page that's in the XAML here. Oops. So this old and new page. So we want to do. Uh, var new page equals we know the sender is ourselves so page host in fact there's kind of no point in sender because it, it is ourself uh, it's simply going to be old and new page so ignore that bit uh, we want to get the old page content in terms of before we change the new page what are we now going to class as the old pages content it's going to be the new page uh, oh we do actually need to do let's go back a minute we do need to do this because we're in a static method so we do need to use the sender to get hold of ourselves. So sender as page host dot new page. So let's get the new page first and the old page. So these are the frames. Well, in fact, we should probably call it that. New page frame, old page frame. Sender is not called sender, is it called D in this case? and so get the frames now we've got the frames we want to get the old content which will be the current pages content so store the current page content as the old page so var old page content equals new page frame dot content Add that then we now want to first clear the contents of this page because we've stored it here we now want to empty out this new page to move it into the old page so remove current page from new page frame and we'll simply do that by setting the content to null then we'll now move the previous page into the old page frame so we've got the old page frame dot content now equals the old page content which was originally the new thing so all we've done at this stage is we've swapped the contents of whatever's in the new page frame and move that into the old page frame which is simply stacked on top of each other so visibly we shouldn't notice anything it's just that whatever's currently set to this page's content will now be in this page's content and that's what this is doing so now we've moved, say in this case, if we're on the login page and we go to the register page, this will be the login page, becomes the old content. The new frame becomes nothing. The old frame is now the login page. And then we want to animate that page out. So we need to say, uh, animate out previous page. So we have old page content isn't equal to null. Or... Um, it 
if old page content is base page first because we know it is but we have to cast it and call that old page um, if it is that and old page isn't it well we don't need to do the null check there we can then simply do oh well, yeah we do actually because we're going to do a task so if it is a base page and if it isn't equal to null which nope we won't need that when you think about the logic because if it's null then it won't be a base page it doesn't know what it is so this would fail so all we need to do is check if the base the old content is a base page effectively that will mean that it isn't null otherwise it wouldn't be a base page so we know we've got a base page now uh, so we know we had a previous page in that case we can then animate this out so old page content well no old page now as so it's the old page content as a base page so that we can access the animate function to animate out and that will animate out the old page notice we're getting a warning here so this is telling us we're calling an asynchronous method so it ends with async so we know that but we're not awaiting it which we don't want to anyway because we don't want to wait for that to animate out before we start animating in the next page so to get rid of that warning we simply tell it to do a task a control dot to find the namespace task dot run get rid of the brackets and pass it the actual task to run and because that now is uh, designed to not error out when you're telling it to run because it's explicitly saying run the task it's obvious we're not awaiting it gets rid of that warning for us so even though they both return an awaitable task Visual Studio won't complain if you tell it to run the task because it's a you know an explicit declaration that we know we're running a task and we're not awaiting it so um, that will then just animate out the old page and instantly carry on to here and then all we need to do is now set the new page content so now we just do new page frame dot content equals whatever the new value was passed into this property changed and that should be it so we press f5 we should see the login page appear which we do so let's just first step through and you can see what's happening so on first load the current property has changed via which you can't see in the call stack but it's obviously changed by the um, if we go through it step by step uh, you have this page host we bound the current page to binding and the data context of that is this so we've bound to the view model locator which finds the application view model and the current page which if we go to application view model you can see here so it's getting this current page as a login that gets passed into current page then the current page of here is a dependency property because we made you know we created it here and every time that gets changed which it just did it calls into this current page property changed which is where we are so that's how we got to here first the value is e dot new value you can see it's login page so we first get the new page and the old page frames from this page so we've now got hold of these two frames the old content right now I'm guessing should be null which it is because there is no page at the when you first create it this this hasn't been set to anything so it's null so there's no content uh, we clear the previous content which is null anyway but it doesn't matter then we move the previous page content into the old which is still null but that's not an issue so both pages are still null right now we then animate out the previous page if it isn't null and if it's a base page which in this case it's null so this won't ever run and then finally we set the current page the new page to the login page so that's the first run we click again and let's just disable this so you can see the animation if it works first so we click this and what should happen is this should slide out because this line of code here will run and the next page should slide straight in which it didn't do so let's see why um, restart well it didn't need to restart that but oh yeah I did actually so there's the first run so we click this so we know that all works get the old page which is the login page we expect set the new page to null which is just not updating I think in the IntelliSense here but it will go to null 
the old pages and all get set to the new one. So again, these contents, because they're on the UI thread, they need at least one cycle to update. So the IntelliSense is saying that these are still the old values, but we know they're not because we've seen the other page animate in. We get the old page and we do tell it to animate out. So let's go to the animate out. And hit here. So we are hitting the animate out. And we are telling it to animate out. So, ah, I've just seen an interesting thing. See, down here, we have got both pages. Because there's the text underneath for the other page. So, if we've got that other page, let's take a look at uh, the base page constructor. Let's make sure it's not creating another page, which it shouldn't do. So base page, we're creating a login page. That's fine. We run that. So when we hit this, we should only create a register page. The login page should never get recreated. So this created a register page, you can see down here. So that's fine. And then we hit that. So we haven't recreated the login page yet. The login page is there and I suspect it's animating in again so hmm where do we go where were we so in the base page I wonder if it's getting reloaded because we're changing the content I wonder if it's firing this load I bet it is actually let's put a breakpoint here I've got a suspicion that by moving the page, the login page, to the content of another frame, it's going to reinitialize because it's been set as a content. It's got to now reinitialize that page to its new host. So I think by doing this line here, we are firing after we've come out of this call. We're going to fire this loaded event again. And then it's animating in, which would make sense. So we create the login page. And then we add it. And it's been loaded. Which is what we expect the first time around. But let's click it again. So we create the register page. We set things up. So we've now loaded one page. I'm not sure which one this is. Register page. Yep. And I bet that's... Yep. So the login page is getting the loaded called... A second time so what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to animate out in this loaded call because it's been loaded but we've already told it to animate out and we know we hit that because we got here um, so we, we still need this function because that should be called in other instances when you can animate out but in this instance where we are moving content there's no point in doing this. We need a different way of handling that situation. So let's create a new public boolean uh, should animate out. A flag to indicate if this page should animate out on load. Uh, useful for when we are moving the page to another frame. So should animate out, all we need to do is set that to true and then move, uh, change this logic. So all page dot should animate out equals true. And we'll comment this, animate out previous page when the loaded event fires, right to this call due to moving frames so we set this flag to say okay animate out and now in this loaded event we now don't need that breakpoint in this loaded event we can say if should animate out await animate out else animate in so if we are set up to animate out on load
I'm made out. Otherwise, animate on the page. So now the logic changes slightly. We tell it that that's true. And then as soon as we exit this function, it fires the loaded event. And then the loaded event will now know that we expect to load out and it should animate out. So there's a nice little example of some debugging for you there and how we figured out the, you know, what was going on. And it's just really investigating suspicions and putting breakpoints in places and you know tracking things through so there's the animate in so let's click and hopefully this should now slide out and the next page slide in oh that was nice so that worked and it was subtle because that's a sign up the other one says sign in that's all it does right now but let's just run that again oh and that looks really nice things are a little bit slow maybe so let's just speed up the base page default animation speed to say half that so it's twice as fast and that's nice so I'd say that's a nice speed uh, we can then also add might as well link this button in on the register page but I don't think we've got a register view model so let's just make that now uh, view model view models out oh, in core uh, Login view model, copy and paste. Oh, I know. We didn't rename this class here. Let's just go ahead and rename that to the same name. And then back to login view model, change this to register. So this is the copy class, remember, not the original. The view model for a register page or register screen, base view model. Email login is running, change that to register is running. We'll obviously have uh, more in here potentially, but for now, this is we can't really finish these view models until we've done the website so we know exactly what we need to actually do. Um, login command, register command. Constructor uh, register view model. Now, register will be the one that takes in. These need to swap around. Register command. Login command is simply going to navigate to the other page. So it will be a login, and this will be register uh, the login async will now become the register attempts to register a new user um, register is running await blah 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 so we can simply do that for now and this will be the login takes the user to the login page current page is login and that should do that's just a basic uh, copy and paste of the login view model just renamed and swapped around so the op functions do the opposite way around uh, rename the class file to the same name as the class then I think the register page needs binding to it as well. Yep, so we need to bind this to the register view model now we have one. Go to the code behind. Oh, get rid of all these unused ones. And change this to the register. And what you're complaining about, we don't have different base classes. Base page, register view model, register page. Yeah, again, I think it just needs building. Yep, so that's now built. It's now got a register view model. This is linked to, when you click this button, it should be the login. Um, so we need to link this button to the login command to go to the login page. So 
command binding uh, login command register needs to change the register command and is busy is set to the register is running and the element is the page yep so that's all I think going to work so there's a sign in page swipes over to the register page register should spin for five seconds and then just go away which is that uh, register is running command and then this should take us back to the sign in page which it does so there we go we've now got a never ending cycle between the two pages uh, let's now take it one step further so this is this is effectively now complete and we should be able to resize this to maximum and it animates all the way out which it does and um, yeah so now we want to we're trying to get this application as complete as possible so that by the time we come to do the web server when we have to stop this and move to the web server and then we come back to this this is really as complete as can be that we just have to link it in with the server so now this is a full-blown login page we haven't done the logic to actually log in because we need the web server but now the animation and the page swaps complete and going back and forth between those pages is complete and this is ready to accept a function uh, and the same as this is ready to accept a function so this is all fully complete we should now start up the application in sign in mode you can swap between the two we can log in once we've already logged in we'll then store information in a configuration file uh, or a, you know a secret location or somewhere we'll store the details about the the login so that when you first open up instead of going to this page you could check if the user's already signed in and instantly take them to the you know the application but we'll do that in another video uh, so this is now complete on these two pages so we shouldn't have to come back to these two pages uh, so now we're going to add let's at least add a dummy so when you click the login button uh, it waits for say one second and then we'll go to the chat page which we haven't really done anything with yet but we'll also slide the menu in so let's go to the uh, let's close all these windows now we've got loads open and the chat page is blank so let's just add something to that so let's just add a text block text hello facetto and I can't see anything that's up there in black so let's make the again this is purely temporary so let's just make anything for now horizontal alignment center vertical alignment center font size font large just literally put a bit of text in there so we can see something that'll do for the chat page so we have the login view model when we log in currently we delay uh, for five seconds let's leave this in as a hint for later on of how we get the password and email change this to delay for one second and now go to chat page so we'll probably add I think we'll add later not right now probably in the next video instead of doing uh, IOC dot well we'll still do IOC dot get for getting the application view model uh, but instead of doing current page and setting that we probably want a, a go to page function in here so that when you change pages in fact we might as well add it now let's just call it go to page uh, application page dot chat because one thing we don't want to do explicitly everywhere we're going to pages like we go to the chat page now we want to show the side menu but then if you go to the chat page in the register page you don't also want to then do uh, dot current page as chat page and then side menu visible as true you don't want to do that twice so let's have a function called go to page let's change this to a private setter so you can't just manually tell it to go to a page you have to use this function uh, make this public Uh, navigate to the specified page uh, page a page to go to 
And then in here we just set the uh, current page equals page. And now show side menu or not. If page equals equals and for now chat, that's the only one. Or in this case, uh, show, what do we call it? Side menu visible equals true only of the page as chat. So that's like a little helper. Um, and I think we do that somewhere else. This is probably going to complain that we're trying to set a private value. Yeah. So now in the login async, instead of doing current page as login, change that to go to page login. And there was one other place here. Go to page register. So now we've got a little helper function, go to page. And then when we tell it to now go to the chat page, the side menu should be visible. So we should be able to click login. Uh, well, let's check that we didn't break anything first. Yep, so now we click login after one second this should slide out and the side menu should slide in and the chat page should slide in this way I think oh and that's nice so that looks really cool uh, in fact I just like the plain text there I think that's the, the finished application right there uh, so we're getting far now that's all done I'll probably style this side menu in a short little video just on you know scroll bar um, styling or something make a nice scroll bar in a video shortly uh, so that's got us now the login and register page fully done and a little nice way to you see the application actually working now you can imagine you've logged in you click and everything starts loading in and we've got all this animation happening which is really adding to the you know the professionalism and keeping the app really modern um, so I think next we'll style this scroll bar we will probably move this up to here so that the setting can go there and we can collapse this out the way, maybe make a collapsible um, menu that these icons go down there and, and shorten out. Uh, and then we'll make finally make this main chat screen here, which is going to be a huge amount of work, but that will be coming up very shortly now. Uh, so again, hopefully this video was useful. Any comments, anything you're not sure of, anything you didn't understand, do just post a comment and I always get back to everybody and I can even do video follow-ups to explain things in more detail. Uh, again, hopefully this was useful. Let me know what you think.